Namaskar. Dear children, today we are going to start with the third chapter of the Ringo, that is Deep Water. And this chapter has been written by William O. Douglas, who was born in Maine, Minnesota, and was raised in Yamika, Washington. He was an American jurist and politician. He served as an Associate Justice of the Supreme Court of the United States. He was nominated at the age of 40 by President Franklin D. Roosevelt and was the youngest justice appointed to the court who served for the longest term in the history of the Supreme Court of America. Now, during this, court, this chapter, the water, is, ba is basically based on the adventures or rather the misadventures of the life of the author. Deep Water deals with the childhood fear of William Douglas. A misadventure at the YMCA pool developed an aversion of water in him and he suffered from hydrophobia. Now what is hydrophobia? Hydrophobia is when you have fear from water. Hydro is water, phobia is fear. The chapter focuses on the fact that childhood fear must never be treated lightly. If they are not tackled, then they make deep inroads into one psychology and William Douglas analyzes his fear and finally determines to overcome it. William Douglas is of the opinion that whatsoever may be the reason, one can overcome any fear by again and again facing it. What, what, does, what is the basic, uh, basic idea? That any fear, you can overcome any fear if you face it again and again. Face it in the eyes, straight in the eyes. The story begins with the narrator recounting an incident that took place when he was hardly 10 or 11 years old. Now, children, I told you in the very beginning that this, uh, this whole story, this whole uh, lesson is very much autobiographical. The writer is talking about his own misadventures which happened with him during his childhood. The narrator had decided to learn swimming at the YMCA pool in Yakima. Now this pool was very near to his residence. So he wanted to learn swimming over there. He was initially worried when he stepped into the pool since it stirred unpleasant memories. He was not having very nice memories of his childhood because before this, YMCA pool, even before that, he had come across some very sore memories during his childhood. When he was hardly three or four years of age, his father had taken him to a beach in California. Now, going to a beach with a father, with your father, is always a very pleasant memory, but something unpleasant happened there. The waves had knocked him over and he had been covered by water. This experience had filled him with a deep fear of water. Now this fear really overcame the child. The narrator felt this fear unsurfacing at the YMCA pool. But over some days, he overcame the fear by observing and imitating the actions of other boys who were swimming in the pool. Now see, the child was trying to overcome the fear. He wanted to overcome it by looking at other children, trying to imitate their action while they were in the pool. One day, the narrator was sitting alone by the side of the pool, waiting for others to turn up. So that way, he must have been the first one to go to the pool that day. He did not have the confidence to enter the pool alone. That sense of fear was there in his mind. A huge boy of about 18 years of age came in, picked him up and threw him into the deep end of the pool. The narrator panicked as he sank to the bottom of the pool, but he kept his wits about him. He decided to push himself up to the surface when his feet hit the bottom and then paddled to the edge of the pool. Now see, the child was making a plan. He was not completely unconscious and while he was going down towards the bottom, even then he was planning to come up this way or that way. He was trying to make some plan. Unfortunately, he came up slowly. He started to panic as he rose, especially when he could not get his face out of the water. The child is making an effort, 
but he is not successful. As he sank slowly back down, he started to lose his breath and was suddenly stiff with fear. Fear completely was over his mind. He was engulfed with fear. He reached the bottom and he jumped again, coming up slowly. He almost came up but again went back under. Darkness surrounded him as he gave up the struggle to survive. Why? Because he was completely exhausted. He was making every effort but he was completely tired and exhausted. Death seemed to welcome him and he lost consciousness. The next thing he knew, he was lying beside the pool, vomiting the water he had swallowed. This incident left him feeling vulnerable and helpless and from that day he was terrified of water. Now this deep fear of water entered very deep inside his mind, his soul and he was completely under the phobia of water. As he grew older, his fear stayed with him and ruined his fishing experiences. It prevented him from enjoying simple joys of life like canoeing, boating and swimming. It prevented him from all these adventures with other children were enjoying. First he swam repeatedly up and down a pool with a belt that was attached to an overhead rope that the instructor held for him. Now the child made a plan that he will do anything to overcome this fear. He appointed an instructor for himself and he started practicing day and night. Now the beginning was with one uh, end of the belt in the hands of the instructor, he started practicing his swimming lessons every day. He panicked every time he went underwater. The instructor then taught him to breathe and kick properly and eventually he learned to swim without help. But see children, that fear is very deep in the mind of the child. The narrator was overjoyed but wondered if he could swim alone without his instructor's support. He managed just fine. See, he managed, but he is not still confident. To curb his lingering doubts, he swam alone across Lake Wentworth and then across Warm Lake, which he had visited before. He did experience his old fear once in Lake Wentworth, but was able to ignore it. Whenever he was, whenever he was in the middle of the river, that old fear used to engulf him. In part sometimes, the residue of fear was still there. When he was able to swim across warm lake and back, he was ecstatic at having conquered his fear. The narrator ends the story by quoting Franklin D. Roosevelt's words, All we have to fear is fear itself. Now what is the meaning of this sentence? All we have to fear is fear itself. Basically the moral over here is that fear will only be, will be there with you until and unless you don't, fear, don't face it. So face your fear again and again, face it in the eyes and overcome it by practice and practice and practice. Thank you.